Every year since 1901, the Nobel Prize is awarded on December 10th in five different fields, namely physics, chemistry, medicine and physiology, literature and peace, to men and women who have conferred the greatest benefit to mankind. It is still regarded as the most prestigious award in the field of science. The recipients are called laureates for the rest of their lives, inherited from the Greek custom of placing a crown of laurel atop of their hero's head. The likes of Marie Curie, Albert Einstein and a majority of other scientists were more than deserving and there were a handful of laureates who raised a few eyebrows and controversy. However, when the star of today's show won the Nobel Prize, he did not just bring in the controversy, he had won it for an entirely wrong discovery. You're watching Egyprop and this is the story of Dr. Johannes Fibigore on how he won the greatest prize in science for an erroneous discovery. Johannes Andreas Graf Fibigore was born to Christian Ludwig Wilhelm Fibigore and Elfried Fibigore on 23rd of April 1867 in Midtjylland, Denmark. His father was a local physician and his mother an author. He lost his father due to internal bleeding at the age of three. After that, his education was looked after by his uncle. In 1883, 16-year-old Fibigore passed his matriculation, equivalent to today's high school, and was enrolled at the University of Copenhagen to study zoology and botany. There he excelled academically, graduating university in 1883. He further pursued his studies and received a medical degree by 1890. He would then go on to work as a physician in several hospitals. In parallel to his work as a physician, he would also study under Robert Koch and Emil Adolf von Behring, who were themselves renowned figures in microbiology. He completed his doctoral thesis, research into the bacteriology of diphtheria, which saw him receive a doctorate degree in 1895. In his research for doctoral thesis, he discovered two strains of diphtheria bacteria, Cornibacterium diphtheri, which causes two different types of diphtheria. It was also during his research on diphtheria that he pioneered an efficient way to grow bacteria inside a closed laboratory. He also developed the blood serum against the disease and tested it on people in 1898. This methodological test on 484 people is considered by many as the first clinically controlled trial. Johannes Fibigo, speaking about the trial, said, quote, in many cases, a trustworthy verdict can only be reached when a large number of randomly selected patients are treated with the new remedy and at the same time, an equally large number of randomly selected patients are treated as usual." Unquote. In 1897, he joined University of Copenhagen as a prosector in medical colleges. A prosector used to be a person who dissects a body for demonstration. At the time, many future great anatomists and biologists kicked off their career as prosectors working for lecturers. He would be promoted to full professor by 1900. By now, he was already a well-respected scientist in Europe, but he was yet to conduct his research on what would be the greatest discovery of his life, or at least he thought it was. In 1907, Fibigore dissected three wild rats captured from Dorpat, officially Tartu in Estonia which he found were having stomach tumors, that is, epithelial tumor. Some tumors appeared to be malignant. To his utter puzzlement, he recovered previously unknown nematodes and their eggs from their stomach. To Fibigo, there definitely was a strong link between the nematodes and the cancer. Immensely enthused by the idea, he rummaged through all available scientific literature related to the subject. He luckily came across an article by a French biologist in 1878 reporting that the nematodes were found in rats because of cockroaches. It explained that the larvae of the nematode were transmitted from cockroaches to the rats where they would grow into adults. He caught some rats from a sugar refinery adjacent to his institute. He caught 61 rats of which 40 of them were parasitized with nematodes. To support his notion, 7 of them had stomach tumors. To further corroborate his assumption, he caught many cockroaches infected with nematode's larvae in the same refinery. It was then obvious to him that when a rat eats nematode-infected cockroaches, the nematodes would then induce cancer in the rats. It made perfect sense. Now it was just a matter of verifying experimentally. The obvious experiment was to feed healthy rats with cockroaches that are infected with nematode larvae. In 1913, after over half a decade, he triumphantly reported a series of three papers that he successfully induced stomach cancer in rats by feeding the rats with nematode-infected cockroaches. 
He was immediately inducted as a member of Swedish Society of Medicine, the first of his numerous honors that would follow during his lifetime. In 1918, his research would be cemented when two Japanese scientists, Yamagiwa and Ichikawa, reported to have induced cancer in rabbits. His achievement was heralded as dawn of the new era in cancer research. After 1920, Shibigo received a staggering 18 nominations for the Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine. He was a strong contender for the prize in 1926. However, The Nobel Committee could not make the final decision and decided not to give the prize for 1926 as one of the jury thought his work was not worthy of the prize. In 1927, he again received 7 nominations and Figaro was awarded the Nobel Prize of 1926 retrospectively. At the award presentation, Wilhelm Wenstedt, Dean of Royal Carolinian Institute, bestowed him the highest of praises. Good. Sivigor's work has been the greatest contribution to experimental medicine in our generation. Your name will shine among the greatest and you will remain a pioneer and a forerunner." Sivigor's own words after receiving the Nobel Prize were, quote, "...the study of the manifold problems presented by cancer has, in recent years, seemed to offer many more riddles than were previously thought to exist, but the history of medicine has never known a period in which problems could be attacked in so many different ways as those made accessible today by the working methods now at our command." Unquote. After a few weeks on 30 January 1928, Fibicor died in glory. He died of heart attack having suffered from terminal cancer. It was after his death that the role of vitamin A in the whole picture of cancer development was fully appreciated. Fibigore's rats were given less vitamin A in their diet. It was found that deficiency of vitamin A could cause tumors and cancer. Parasites had merely caused the tissue irritation which would induce benign tumors. Later, several research papers would be published regarding the nematodes, which he called Spiroptema carcinoma. It was conclusively demonstrated in 1952 that the tumors formed by Fibigore's experiment were benign, primarily occurring due to vitamin A deficiency. Dr. Fibigore was of course long gone by the time his theory was disproved. His incredible story is regarded as the biggest blunder in the history of Nobel Prize. Nevertheless, Dr. Fibigore had a splendid career as a scientist. His research methodology on diphtheria conceived the idea of clinical trial, which is still in use to test any new medicines or vaccines against a disease. His theory went unchallenged in part due to the limitations in science and technology. and partly due to his fallacy towards correlations between the parasitized rats and them developing tumors despite his carcinoma theory being proven wrong it does no harm to his scientific credibility he will always be a pioneer in microbiology and medical science subscribe to our channel and ring the bell icon for more contents like this